Well, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the third uh, player interview uh, for the fan engagement and the players. Uh, today, we've got Michael Campbell, Durham Town's top goal scorer this season, and Andy Easto, uh, our centre half who's been playing um, all of our games so far. Also, today, we're joined by Jack who's a media student who's going on to do a degree, isn't that right, Jack? Yeah, a degree in um, football journalism, so yeah, happy to be here. So he's going to be joining us with uh, a couple of the interviews going forward. So welcome, Jack. Welcome. Cheers. Enjoy your debut, mate. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so basically, as I said, we did these um, interviews to start with uh, last year because up until then we had a pretty settled squad for many years. The fans knew who the players were and... Um, since uh, what happened last year happened, we've had a new squad then. Obviously, we had the relegation, and as, as would normally happen, players leave, and now we've got a whole new squad again. So this is just an opportunity for supporters and people associated with Durham Town to get to know you. So uh, first things first, Michael, first. Uh, so firstly, what do we call you as supporters? Uh, Cam. Cam. Cam is fine, yeah, yeah. And Andy? Andy, or? Eastie, Yen, all three, really. Oh, I've got plenty, plenty yeah, to choose Yeah, yeah, options. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, for people who haven't seen you so far this season or haven't uh, been around us at pre-season, Cam, where do you, what position do you play and how do you like to play the game? Uh, number nine. Um, I don't really know how I like to play the game. Uh, I'm more of a possession-based striker, I, I like to think. Uh, years ago, I used to love running in behind, but getting a bit old now. So yeah. uh, Possession-based, I like to fight defenders, um, get on the end of crosses, really, in the box, six-yard yeah. finisher. A classic number nine, then. Uh, a a Linux so. style number yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Less running, the better. Yeah. <laughs> and Andy? Um, well, I've played everywhere, really. I'm predominantly more centre half these days. My early days were centre midfield. Played a fair bit last year up front. So, anywhere I can get a game, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're certainly getting a game here. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, it, yeah. It's going really well so far. No, isn't I'd it? say I'm predominantly a centre half, yeah. Yeah. Who comes up for corners and, and potentially yeah, scores and goals? Yeah, and chip well. in with the old yeah. Goal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So while we're on that, uh, when we talk about history of uh, where you've played before, what what's your football in history? So Cam first, where have you played before? Uh, so, so when I was younger, I played up in Scotland, um, and then I joined the military at quite a young age, so 18, 19, um, and then I didn't play for about five or six years uh, through operations and stuff like that, um, and then I started playing for Thetford Town in 2015, I believe. Played there for four or five seasons, joined Norwich United last year, and then Durham this year. How did those uh, seasons go, uh, playing in Norfolk football? You, lots of goals, a successful? Uh, I mean, to be honest, I absolutely loved it at Fetford for a while, um, and then I just needed a new challenge, and Norwich provided that. Um, I really enjoyed my time there as well, different group of lads, different changing room, good buzz about the, uh, about the team. And then, similar to this really, another challenge, um, push myself and, and, and do something different. And you were always a number nine in all those clubs you played for? Yeah, so I've always been predominantly a number nine or part of a front three. As I say, when I was younger, I had a bit more pace and, and liked to get around. So anywhere across like a front three or, or a wide man or a nine. But I think as I'm getting older, I'm more settled in the nine position. Just happy goal hanging and banging. Yeah, goals, happy <laughs> standing in the middle and letting, letting lads run and cross it to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah it sounds like an easy life, mate. Yeah. <laughs> And Andy, I think a lot of the Norfolk football fans who, who join us at Durham Town and a lot of the casual supporters who come in from Norfolk will recognise your name as well as you because um, you've been around Norfolk football for quite a, a lot longer, haven't you? So you last year you were at Norwich United and you were on the management team there? Yeah, so I was assistant manager to my brother at Norwich United. I'd been there 10 years. Before that, I was at Wroxham for three, four years. Um, had quite a successful time there. Before that, I was at Sheringham. Um, I think I had two, three seasons there and done quite well there also. And before that, I had a year at Mob Barton, so I've nearly had all the fellow and non-premier teams. Yeah. <laughs> all the Norfolk ones, anyway. Yeah, no. so, you've, so you've always played at, uh, effectively, the highest level you can play at this level Yeah, pretty Norfolk much. Football. Yeah, pretty much. So Sheringham was the Ancom Prem, which was quite a good level back then. Yes. Uh, we also got to Senior Cup Final, where we played Wroxham at Cow Road, which was quite a good achievement for an Ancom yeah. club. Yeah. Then from there, I went to Wroxham. Uh, we won the league there, we had to a vast final, um, done really well there, and then moved to Norwich United and stayed there for 10 years, successful there as well on the whole. And then this year, obviously, a yeah, new challenge. Yeah. So you've, it, when you were at Roxon, did you play at step four at any, any stage? Yeah, so we got promoted for the, when we won the league, that was their first time at that level. Yeah. Um, we had a good season the first year in that level, 
I think we come 10 for 11, something like that, which was pretty good. But then the management left and a lot of the players left, so then I followed Chip as well. Yeah, so we, we, you've obviously played against Deerham quite a few times in, in, that, in that period. Yeah. Um, so I think when we signed you, a lot of our older supporters obviously recognised your name. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it's meant as a compliment with uh, people were saying... He, he, he looked horrible to play against. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were glad to finally have you on our team. So is, is that is that? That's like... probably fair. Yeah. I think I scored a few goals against Deerham up here, so I probably remember him for that. Got yeah. quite a good record actually, I think, against Deerham Rock for Roxham. Especially, we used to come here and win. So, <laughs> so, so, so trying to be contentious. This is fan yeah, engagement, by the way. <laughs> probably remembering me for the wrong reasons. Yeah. yeah. That's good though. Yeah, I mean, it's, good. Good, it's good to have players. Well, I suppose so. with Norfolk, there's only a set number of clubs, so you're yeah. often going to know people over the years, and, and a set number of players as well. Exactly, you know, yeah. we've, we've said before when we've been at Step Four, there's only, you know, a, 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 so many players in the whole county that are good enough to play at this level because it's a big county with not many people in it, and and but a lot of clubs who, who play around here. So it's, it's good to have uh, good players coming down from Scotland as well. <laughs> Going down. Did you play much in Scotland? Uh, I played a little bit. Um, a local side, Newton Grange Star. Um, I played for them for a couple of years. But uh, as I say, I'd always had aspirations to join the military. So yeah. pretty much as soon as I left school, I did. Um, so I didn't take it too seriously back home. Um, and then yeah, like 2015. Is that like? Is, is that in the Edinburgh area? Is it? Uh, yeah. So it's about four or five miles outside Edinburgh. Yeah. yeah. So are they like a, a lowland or highland or? Uh, I don't even know where they are now. <laughs> I, I, I haven't looked. I haven't checked for a long time. Um, at the time, it was just um, youngsters football. So, okay, but you, you know, it's it good to get a good grounding in effectively non-league football, and then and then yeah. you kept that, even though you had a break from it. Yeah. Obviously, you still had the desire to, to keep on playing football. As yeah, well. I always missed it. So even though I was away and, and I couldn't really commit to any club um, because of like the timing and, and and how much I was travelling and stuff at the time, yeah. um, so it was pointless to sign for anyone. Um, because I couldn't commit and yeah. it wasn't until I changed my role within my job that allowed me that free time to sort of commit to a season and at least be able to play the majority of that season. Um, but in the meantime, obviously, you, you do play for your work and, and you, you're yeah. the captain, aren't you there? Yeah, yeah. So that must have taken you to some um, decent grounds. Or... Yeah, so um, when I started playing in 2015, I started playing for my station. Um, Whilst playing for them, we entered a, a, a cup that was sort of sponsored by the RAF. Uh, got noticed there by someone on the coaching staff from the RAF representative team. Um, and I've been playing there for eight years now as well. Uh, got given captaincy last year. Um, cheers, thank you. Um, but yeah, we've played at Fratton Park, um, Yeovil Town, um, Shrewsbury Town. Played at Old Trafford actually in July um, in a charity match. So yeah, we, we, we do well. and. Um, the tri service side of life as well. We travel around and, and play at grounds across uh, Europe as well. So, yeah, it's really, really good, basically. That sounds proper exciting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's, nice, it's nice that you've actually chosen Deer in Town and Thetford and Norfolk and that to, <laughs> yeah. uh, to, to apply your trade and everything because, you know, if you have these globe shot options, they must be fantastic playing football in all these different Yeah, places. and, and it, it comes at a price. I mean, like, at times there will be, you know, uh, games where I might have, I miss, miss a game for Deer yeah. because I'm playing or representing um, the RAF, but I do try and manage it as much as possible, manage expectations, my own and obviously the managers and stuff as well. So how long is this? How many games are generally in their season? Uh, so it's usually 10 games a season, which culminates in playing the Army and Navy uh, in March. Um, okay. So 10 games, so 10 friendlies throughout okay. the season, um, but they're usually like three or four day meets um, with a game at the end of it. So yeah, quite a lot, quite a lot of football. Well, the Army and Navy should be worried, Jack, shouldn't yeah, they? They've yeah. got Deer and Town's top goal scorer yeah. playing for us at the moment. Yeah. And you're moving to the Midlands soon as well, aren't yeah, you, as part of yeah. your degree? So if you're ever playing at Pride Park or something, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, where I you're going to be. Around, yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah. I was going to ask as well, um, for both of you, um, was it uh, when you sort of get that phone call to come and play for Deer, and was it an easy decision for both of you? Or was it something you had to consider and... Yeah, was it something you wanted to do when you first heard about it? So mine was a bit of a weird one, really, because I was actually on holiday. So I was on holiday at the time. Um, so the season had obviously finished. Um, I wasn't in contact with anyone at Durham. Um, and then I got a message from uh, Wattle, um, who obviously you interviewed last week or the week before. Um, and he had just said that he, he had been over to Durham, looked really good, and that he had given the manager my number. So I was 
or you know, all right, I'm on holiday. Uh, I'll wait and see what happens. Got a message from Toasty, and yeah, it was from there. It was a bit exciting, really, because obviously Deerham had come down a league, but I wanted to see what their ambition was like. And then as soon as I sort of met up with everyone around the club, really, because um, I was late to pre-season, if you will, um, being on holiday. Um, from there, it was just yeah, it was just a snowball of like, let's get it going. Yeah, and obviously for you, Andy was uh, again, it wasn't an uh, instant decision. I'd had I've known I've known Toasty many years anyway, so we'd had a little bit of communication. I spoke to Paul Cook a couple of times as well. Um, so it was over probably a period of three four weeks where I'd had constant chats um, just to des- decide what what I really wanted to be honest and. Once I knew several of the lads that were with me last year had signed as well and Toasty had already made three, four, five good signings. Yeah. I could see what he was trying to put together. Yeah, I suppose that always factors in when you've got players you both know from yeah, I mean, the previous club. Yeah, yeah it's a helps. massive contributing factor. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think, as you just said, that massively helped my decision as well because I w- wasn't in the country, I was on holiday, um, but more people that were coming into the fold giving me a message and saying, look, there's a lot of ambition that building a really good squad um, is something to look at getting involved with. Um, I think after one sort of pre-season friendly, I could see where the, cl- or the direction the club wanted to go in. And yeah, that was probably more the exciting part. Yeah, I suppose it's like you said, when it's easy hearing it from one person, but then when you've got multiple people that are saying the same things, then it obviously must sell sell it even more to you. Yeah, especially when it's people you trust. You know what I mean? Yeah. People you trust around football and stuff are saying the same thing, then it kind of helps your decision-making. And obviously, for the both of you, um, obviously being latter arrivals in pre-season, how have you found that integration process? Or has it been pretty pretty easy to sort of assimilate into the group and get used to your new teammates? Yeah, I think and it's been like pretty that? seamless, to be fair. I think the club sells itself, to be honest. Yeah. You've only got to just have a look around and see, you know, if not the best non-league club there is in terms of facilities so you add that to the, the, the quality of the players and the people that you know it's, it's quite an easy decision on when it's purely football based but for me I was coming out of an assistant manager role as well so I'd had a few options to take or to help run other clubs at a lower level but it wasn't really what I fancied at the time so it took me a bit a few more weeks to make that decision but yeah I'm glad I've made the right decision. Do you think that assistant manager role has helped you like now in with with Deer and like helping you look after the players and yeah, I that, that always, experience. I think I've always you know, been like that as a player anyway. Yeah. I've always, always tried to give good advice to people and obviously the older you get, the mm-hmm. more advice you've got to give players. So it's definitely something I've enjoyed doing. Um, but at the minute I'm on a playing basis, which I'm now enjoying playing again. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, and is it, is it nice um, having almost the pressure off as a, just, just a player? Is it, do you yeah, finding think, the game easier now? Yeah, just I, think, I think it is quite nice to have that pressure off because sometimes when you're in the management, you can go and really beat yourself up after a defeat or yeah. what we've done wrong, what we're overthinking. So at the minute, I'm just purely looking after my own performance and that's, that's a little less stress, I would have said. Yeah. yeah, so it's the best of both worlds. You can still be a leader. Yeah, like you said, you're, you're a natural leader and I imagine you both are natural leaders in the dressing room but you don't have that pressure and you can just go back to why you started playing in the first place, just enjoy playing the game, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so, goal celebrations. Uh, obviously, you're the top scorer here at the moment. Yeah. Um, we've seen some good goal celebrations so far from Mac G and, and uh, from Sam as well. So yeah, mine, mine aren't quite as elaborate as Mac G's. Mac G plans is. <laughs> um, no, my, mine sort of was birthed last year um, from, at Norwich United. Every time I scored, everyone used to run up to me and salute because obviously yeah. the military thing. Um, so I've just carried that on this year. So every time I score, apart from obviously last week when it didn't really matter. But, <laughs> um, no, in future games, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on doing that, the salute, just because it's funny and everyone yeah. knows why. Well, hopefully we see plenty of salutes yeah, in this yeah. season. At least 30 would be lovely. Um, so, uh, following on from last week, obviously it was a bit of a setback for the club, but how's, how's the mood in the change room? Is, uh, I know you haven't been in there yet today, but how was the mood after the game? Was people still upbeat? Did people accept it was just a one-off? Or was there... Or, uh, uh, how, how did it, it feel was, to you? It was, yeah, it went, went great. Yeah. I mean, it probably weren't just a defeat. It was quite a heavy defeat, which I suppose it was sometimes you find more out in a defeat of players than you do yeah. when you keep winning. 
um, all the best teams lose a game. It's, a, it's just important we've got a game tonight yeah. where sometimes you have to wait a week for your next game. Yeah. So, so, we can so you can bounce back straight away. You've got an opportunity to bounce back straight away. And let's be honest, Woodbridge aren't a, a bad side, are they? they? They were fourth or fifth or something last year. A settled squad at home. Um, yeah, and in, in, I know you know a lot of you know each other quite well, but it's a new squad, new manager, new everything. Um, I think people would be quite naive if they expect to just roll over and, and beat everybody this year. No, but there is bound to I, be, that's a sport, isn't it? There's bound to be days like that. I do think the first goal is quite important in every game, and they caught us off guard with a bit of a snapshot and an angle. I think it caught Coombsy off, yeah. off guard as well. And when you're one down, suddenly you can think, oh, what's going on here? By the time we really settled down, we're 3 0 down. So. Our reaction after half time was quite good. We got back into it. We started to sort of play again. That looked like the yeah. first three games, but ultimately we got no points. Well, we've got a chance to come back, yeah. like you said today. So, on to a brighter subject then. Uh, personal aspirations, what you guys feel that you want to get out of this season. Uh, so, you'll probably say 50 goals and play for Scotland and, and load more clean sheets and play for England. Yeah. <laughs> But I know, I know when you've, I've asked footballers before, uh, people don't like talking about numbers, but uh, personal aspirations this season or moving on, do you, you have an aspiration to go back to step four? Anything like that? So, Cam, what are your... I think for me, um, numbers ain't really what I'm interested in as long as we're up there. So if, we, if we've put ourselves in a chance of potentially winning the league or going up at the end of the season, despite my numbers, it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. If the lads either side of me get 25 each and I, I stay on the three that I've already got, yeah. I'm happy with that as long as the club are up there because yeah. I think they should be, especially yeah. with the the size and the quality of the dressing room. Yeah. We should be. Yeah, we as Yanni said, we we put that result last week to bed, mm -hmm. but we have to learn from it. And if we do, I don't see why we can't. Oh, that's a very professional answer. Yeah. You want to write that down? He's obviously done yeah. media training. You want to follow yeah. camera around? Yeah. Uh, Andy. Yeah, yourself? no, I agree. Um, I suppose. For me, it's just to compete on all levels. Yeah. Uh, we want to be going into March and April with something to play for. Yeah. There's nothing worse when you get to Christmas and kind of your season to pit her out. You want to be going into the last two months with big home crowds, with big games and something to play for. Games that mean something. Yeah. 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 Well, there's no small games in, uh, in, 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 in this league at the moment. Deerham Town obviously want to, as a club and as a fan base, and I'm sure as a dressing room, want to uh, go back to where we were last year and and and, and take a lot of you, all you guys with us who got us there and everything. So there, there must be um, a real aspirate, a feeling around that. Yeah, I suppose with the FA Cup game last Friday, there was a yeah. good vibe around the club. I think we stayed in the bar till nearly one last, like that yeah, game. Yeah. Next week, we've got another Friday night. So if you can get big games on Friday nights, you can attract more people. Yeah. And yeah, it's and, 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 and singing songs keeps fans well, in bars, you know. doesn't it? So we, we, we saw you, Andy, didn't we, sir, doing a Tom Jones number? Yeah. Uh, I, I believe there is a GIF now about to go out with, with you on it. <laughs> no, that's just one then. Just, just, just keep your eye out for that. I'm sure yeah. it's a good one. Uh, and Cam, have you got a yeah, song? Yeah, I, right I got my song tonight um, after the game. Uh, hopefully we win, otherwise it'll be a bit... Yeah. I've actually, I've actually um, picked up a gig from my uh, Tom Jones on, uh, yeah, I've got to sing at Big Fella's 70th um, birthday party, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Is that on a Monday night? Yeah, it might be on a Monday night, maybe up Spaston Rec, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and I think, um, I don't know, I don't know back to the beginning of Durham Town's history, but I can't remember too many Scottish footballers, so... No, nah, they, they haven't even got any haggis, nips and tatties on the, uh, no. after the game. So, <laughs> we'll have a word with the I'll keep pushing company. for it, yeah, yeah. I'll keep pushing for it. <laughs> but is yours going to be... Uh, uh, oh, I'm not going to say it. Uh, I think okay. a, lot of, a lot of the lads know what it is, and you can probably guess, but I'll, um, I'll keep it for now. Okay. Um, not it's not, no. Nah. No. I was, I was just going to pay the fine, but the lads <laughs> got back, got, got into me about singing it, so I'll, I'll sing it instead. We've just got back off holiday. You don't want to be throwing fifty quid away, do you? I suppose. Well, I, I know, but I prefer the, I prefer the drink. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> fifty quid's going to go towards it, towards drink. So I do like a, a bevy. So yeah, but I'll sing instead. All right. Um, so you'll be glad to know that's the end of the football questions. Right. So now, so. Um, the last two parts of uh, these player interviews, I, if you, you, I know you guys have seen the last ones before. Uh, we have the football quiz. Uh, so at the moment, uh, Brad Spooner's top of the league with nine yeah. correct answers in 30 seconds. Um, I, I, we did talk about this before, so they, they are very competitive. Um, 
Definitely, Andy, you definitely want to beat Spooner and get top of that league, oh, don't you? Yeah, you're going to be in it, you want to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely being probed for what questions are coming as well. So, uh, so without further ado, uh, Jack, if you could just hold that. Jack's going to time it as well. So, if you can pick, <laughs> pick an envelope each. Pink's my colour. Is it? That one. I'll just keep that one sealed for now. Yeah, no problem. Scotch Division 3 sides. No. <laughs> Money rules. Ready? I hope yeah. it's Premier League. Well, we, we did hope there would be some easy ones, but unfortunately for yeah. you... <laughs> um, well, you, you're an international footballer from what you've told us, so yeah. you'll have 30 seconds to name as many Erda Divisie sides as you can. Really? Netherlands. Yeah, that's the Dutch Premier League, yeah, basically. Yeah. This is quite tough. So, but but. Not about three, mate. I think. And, and he did say before he was up. He was up. You were upset that there was uh, questions there that didn't have as many answers as others. Twenty. There's loads in here. Yeah, but that's tough. That's tough. <laughs> Does anyone even watch Aaron? On that one, I think. Well, hopefully I've got you got do. Have you? Yeah. Well, like two, I think. Three. I can tell what you're doing, you're, you're slowly preparing. No, no, yeah, so <laughs> I, 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 we'll get going. So, ready? Three, two, two one, go. I act PSV. Done. <laughs> Keep thinking. Uh, I don't even know, I don't watch it. Fire Nord. Yep. Uh, well, I've, so, I've levelled Mac G, yeah? Yeah. Right, at least I'm not, at least I'm not last. Just name Dutch Cities uh, for the next, tw uh, for the next uh, nine seconds. Yeah, fuck it. I'm still Norwich know. played one in 1993. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I'm following Norwich in the yeah. three, yeah. and I was three years old. And that's no, time. So, three. Not bad. I'll read them out to you if you want, mate. Yeah, that would, that would have been a good one. Yeah. Yeah, these aren't yours. FC20. <laughs> no, you've got so, I wish AZ, you had them. AZ out yeah. We'll get nine. No. AZ Alkmaar was one. He missed. Uh, Ajax you got. Almir, Excelsior, Fine Lord you got. Fortuna Sittard, Go Ahead Eagles, Heravain, Heracles, mm -hmm. NEC, PEC Zwolle, <laughs> PSV you got. RKC Valvik, Sparta Rotterdam, FC20 and Utrecht and Vitesse. Vitesse. <laughs> they don't count for you though. And Volendam. So between the four of us we would have got five. <laughs> Quite some no, you would have got, yeah. you would have got six. What you got that? three, and you got three. Eagles. Go ahead, Eagles. Who the hell? I know. It is tough, but you know, I wouldn't laugh too hard just yet, Andy. No, I'm not laughing. <laughs> I was trying to help him out. Are you, you ready, Jack? So, oh god. Oh my god. Right. So, <laughs> didn't like that reaction. I actually, I've actually got a preparatory question for this because it's quite a complicated. Yeah. One. I'll, I'll <laughs> Oh, All right, so in 30 seconds, Andy Easter has got to name as many football second names as he can. So I've got an example. This is only in the top four divisions, the professional leagues in England. Mm -hmm. So Kidderminster Harriers won't be an answer because oh. they're in non-league, but Harriers okay. is an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in 30 seconds, I'll get them all out now. You've probably named quite a few. You'll be surprised an experienced football man like yourself. Mm. Uh, three, two, one. United. Yep. City. Mm -hmm. Rovers. Rangers. Argyle. That's five. Mm, gone mad. Halfway. United City. Rovers. Rangers. Uh, Coral Town. Six. Um, God, mine's gone blank. <laughs> Oh, there's going to be loads, isn't there? There's loads, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Time. Time. Wow. Oh, wait, How six. Did that go? Yeah. Six. Well, you, well, you just you didn't talk for 20 seconds. No, that's, <laughs> that's tough, mate. Do you want to read them all out? Yeah, You're yeah. going to kick yourself because you've yeah. obviously heard of all. Villa, Albion, Palace, oh. Town, City United, Forest, Hotspur, yeah, Wanderers, see. Rovers, Argyle, you got North End, Wednesday, Athletic, County, wow. Orient, Stanley, Alexandra, Dons and Rovers. Oh, at least I'm not last. At least you're not last. You're joined, joined second. I'm joined last, though. You get you're joined second. Then, you? Oh, yeah. You're just keep the same ones. Yeah, I've never watched Eric oh, DC, so yeah. I'm not going to know any. Right. right, so now we move on to uh, the manager's questions, right, which is right. the final part of this. Um, just, shall we just cut it there? <laughs> we, we, can, we can cut it here. So I've got them in order. Uh, so yours is first, Cam. Yeah. Um, 
I think Toasty's been lazy with this question, but see what you think. Right. <laughs> he says, uh, can you explain the rumour that, uh, that you can't swim and that's why you didn't join the Navy? <laughs> well, you actually have to pass a swimming test to get into the RAF, so... I know. He hasn't done Good his research, research has he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> obviously, you're happy with your decision. Yeah. And, yeah. You, and you probably enjoy beating the Navy when you play yeah. them, don't you? Well, if I had to go back 10 years or 13 years, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a different choice. I'd still join the RAF, so I'm happy. Yeah. Because you'd have ended up at Deerham Town. Yeah, well... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your, uh, I think his question for you is slightly more researched, obviously, because he knows you a little bit better. Mm. Uh, it makes absolutely no sense to me, so I'm just oh. going to read it out <laughs> to you. Uh, when taking the dog out, uh, do you prefer to run or just jump into a ditch? Is what it says. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> when taking the dog out? Does he know? Yeah. I'll, just, I'll just read the questions, mate. The dog dog? <laughs> <laughs> I'm bamboozled by that. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. No comment, I think. Uh, no, I don't know. Oh, well. Oh, well, he keeps calling me the Scottish 007, so he doesn't really know much, no, does he? No, no. Well, no. But the, the very first uh, 007 was Scottish. Though, aren't they? Yeah. I think no research. Get what's that, yeah. Maybe. Should yeah. we get a spin? Obviously, this cold he's got is affecting him, isn't it? Yeah. For, uh, no, but, no, lads, no. <laughs> that's, that's the end of it. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, taking part in the fan engagement and the player interview. Uh, so thanks very much for joining us. No Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Thank you.